So today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the biggest changes in the 1.23 update that really not a lot of people are talking about, but it ends up being a significant change to the FAL or foul as I'll probably call it throughout the video just because it's easier to say. What you'll notice is they created a brand new damage profile that kind of makes it a little bit overpowered and they'll probably revert this buff very soon at least i'd imagine to because when you do the numbers it's kind of broken i think a lot of people don't like semi-automatic weapons so that kind of ends up being an issue and we're going to talk about why it could be one of the most dominant weapons within multiplayer and warzone once people start getting the hang of how broken it actually is if you enjoyed the video or learned something new let me know by hitting that like button goal on today's video is 2500 likes and if you're brand new want to find your way back for more call of duty content just make sure you're subscribed with notifications on and if you'd like to join the community discord link at the top of the description tons of people are partying up on a regular basis for both multiplayer warzone and pretty much everything in between so the first thing we're going to talk about is recoil and it really depends on how fast your trigger finger is with this weapon it is trigger capped unfortunately so no matter how fast you hit your finger or click the mouse it can only go so fast which is right around 500 rounds per minute and what you'll notice is right as you do that if i don't press it incredibly fast that almost looks like there's no recoil Literally, the bullets don't move. So if you don't want to have a fast trigger finger, that's perfectly fine. It means your shots will hit. Obviously, when people get close quarters, you don't want to be firing as fast as possible so you can at least try to hit that trigger cap. So if I want to try and go as fast as possible, what I would do is just line it up, and then I would fire as quick as possible. And you can see that the recoil goes significantly up and to the right, and it's pretty much consistent all the way across. This is one of the hardest tests I've had to do for recoil, and the reason for the inconsistency because it's hard to reach that max trigger cap consistently every single time, because if you go too fast, sometimes it won't register properly, and you actually get a little bit slower rate of fire. So it kind of ends up with some issues. You kind of just got to figure out the timing that works best for you, but at the end of the day, if you don't fire all that fast, you'll end up with some pretty tight recoil patterns. So right here on the top left is the base foul recoil pattern. And that's kind of what we just showed off in some of the gameplay there. Uh, at the top left is this is the aim down sight time for the foul. And this is the difference when you equip a specific attachment. Um, as we go throughout, you're gonna see the muzzle brake doesn't look like it's doing much, but a little bit slower aim down sight. Compensator looks like it's kind of helping. Generally the compensator really does a good job on most weapons. Um, so you're seeing a little bit of an improvement here. Marksman barrel, this is the longest barrel that's going to help you out significantly. Normally, the longest barrel tends to do that because it has that built-in recoil control. The uh, OSW para, this one actually makes it a little bit faster, aimed on sight, so you do get penalized. You can see the recoil is a little bit higher on these blue dots, but not significantly. Uh, commando foregrip kind of looks a little inconsistent it does look like less but a little inconsistent merc doesn't look like you're getting much of a difference you can see it's 27 milliseconds slower ranger looks like it's kind of helping but it kind of is bending a little bit far to the right um so it's just a little bit odd operator does look like it's helping out quite a bit uh it's going to slow you down 29 milliseconds rubberize doesn't look like it's helping at all even though it's not penalizing you here no stock doesn't look like it's hurting you uh, it does make your aim down sight significantly faster and a lot of times with this it'll also improve your hip fire uh, accuracy because it does tighten up that hip fire spread and then the ultimate difference here is the burst literally you could spam the burst as fast as possible and this is the recoil patterns you get it does three and then it's so slow in between bursts that it recenters and you do the burst recenters does the burst um, so that could be a viable option um, but you just got to be aware that it's not going to be a fully automatic so your precision is much more important in those individual scenarios so that's obviously one part of the equation but let's go ahead and take a look at what that new damage profile looks like in game so the foul actually got this huge update but it primarily affects the closer ranges prior to the update there was really only one damage drop off for this weapon pretty much it did 45 pretty much anywhere on the body 54 to the chest up close and then 72 to the head as we get a little bit further away around 42 meters it has a drop off of 34 to the body or anywhere on the body uh, upper chest will be 40 and then the headshots will be 55 which means that anytime you land two headshots it's still going to be two shots to kill in core just because that adds up to 110 which is enough to damage the player with the new update they actually added this third range and then right at the 19 meter mark all the way up to here you're going to do extra damage you're going to have a new damage profile where you're going to do 65 to any of the limbs or the body upper torso is going to be the 78 damage and then the 105 to the head in core multiplayer you're not going to really notice a difference when it comes to those chest shots 
but if you manage to land a headshot up to 19 meters, it's going to be able to kill the player in one shot. Um, when you stack attachments, you're going to be able to get much further out and all the way up to about 27 meters. So I thought I'd show off those ranges. This is without any attachments. So right at this range is right around that 20 meter mark. Um, if he's just a hair outside of that, he's not going to die by a headshot. Um, but then as he comes to full health, takes a step forward, you'll see that the tag says right around 19 to 20 meters. So right there, right at the 19, 20 meter mark, is where you're gonna get a one shot a headshot. So this little zone did not exist before. It was just a standard damage range, but they added a complete new damage profile. And this impacts the weapon significantly within multiplayer because you can get a one shot headshot from this range without any attachments. So this is a range with the marksman barrel and the monolithic suppressor. So right at this range should be just outside of that kill range. Um, and then as they inch forward, come to full health, you'll get a good idea of exactly how far that 27-ish meters is. And right there is 27 meters. This is core multiplayer standard health. Um, so even from zero all the way up to 27 meters, you can get a one-shot headshot uh, with this weapon, which is absolutely insane. Um, in, in Warzone, that actually translates pretty significantly because these damage values are significantly higher than the previous version of the foul. So this thing could be the number one weapon for close quarters combat. I know it's a little bit awkward, but we're gonna get into that. So once we have that information combined with the rate of fire, we end up with the damage per second, but that doesn't really mean much until we actually factor that in and the number of shots it's gonna take to kill someone in core game modes if you're aiming for the chest and the head. So once we do all that, then we end up with a time to kill based off the number of shots to kill based off the individual health. On the left is the overall time to kill in milliseconds. So 1,000 milliseconds would be one second. 500 would be half a second. And then as we go to zero, obviously that's zero. Then we put that against distance at the bottom. Right here you can see zero, five, all the way up to 70 meters. And as it goes further out, the time to kill gets slower. So it increases. And so the higher the number is, the worse it actually is in that particular instance. So for these first three, we're gonna look at at the bottom three here. This is within about 12 and a half meters. We have the MP7, which is this orange one. We have the M4, which is the little green one right here at the top. And then the bottom one is going to be the FAL. So what we're looking at here, this has the fastest time to kill in core game modes. These bottom three are core game modes. Um, out of everything all the way up to 55 meters with the best attachment it's going to be two shots to the chest obviously we talked about you can get that one shot kill right around 27 ish meters which is right around half of that distance it's kind of like like i said they cut it in half and they kind of added a brand new thing there so this doesn't necessarily tell the whole story but i didn't want to make it so we're landing 100 headshots because that doesn't tell the whole story either so what we're looking at here is you can see that this thing is very dominant especially if you can land chest shots, which isn't even all that hard to do, especially when you only need to land two of them, even up to about 55 meters. So with the best attachments, as far as the longest range, that includes the monolithic suppressor and whatever the longest barrel is, this is what your individual time to kill is. And you can see it is broken at 120 milliseconds. Um, you can see these other ones, the MP7 is great up close and then it kind of falls off. And then the M4, why it is a rifle they always make the rifle so strong in usually call of duty games and that's why you're seeing it do so well right here then when we go into warzone this is why i was saying that this could be the new option when it comes to warzone so now what we'll do is take a look at these next three lines so this bottom right here is the foul and you can see it's a little bit of a damage profile you can see that the mp7 does really well up close all the way up to about 12 and a half meters has a huge drop off and then isn't really all that great compared to the m4 um, the biggest advantage for the MP7, even though it does have that damage drop off, it's a little bit better mobility and then faster aim down sight time. When we get into this right here, this is the problem with the foul right now. They created this range. It didn't exist before. Um, you got to imagine that this line right here, um, this, this one that we're looking at in the middle here, this one would extend all the way across. So this buff literally took off like 100 milliseconds off the time to kill like over 100 milliseconds. And what we're looking at there is a broken time to kill because look at how fast this is killing. This kills faster than the MP7 in core game modes beyond 27 meters. 
Think about that for a second. A gun in Warzone is killing faster than an SMG in multiplayer, which is absolutely absurd. So obviously you gotta land chest shots. You can't just land anywhere on the body, but keep in mind that if you're landing chest shots, it only requires four shots to the chest. If you mix in a headshot in there, you could drop the time to kill even further because as we saw, those do 105 damage. Two headshots and a chest shot, you're dead. One headshot, two chest shots, you're dead in Warzone. Three bullets to kill with this weapon. You just spam it. That's why it's so great as floor loot. Because you can kill someone in two shots. At point blank range with no attachments. And that's why it is one of the best floor loot weapons in the entire war zone. So something to keep in mind. This can join the meta. Um, if people start thinking about it differently. Maybe use it as an SMG. And then use something else for long range. Um, or use it as your primary option. Short, medium and long and for your ultra long ranges beyond about 55 meters. So if you shift how you're thinking, you kind of convert this more to an SMG style weapon or those close quarters engagements, and you combine that with the burst, you hit them in the chest, they're basically dead in one burst in war zone. Think about that up to right around 27 meters, which is broken. Um, I, I think they're going to revert this in some way because that just doesn't seem like that's viable. You go into a house, someone preaming you with an FAL, you get insta deleted you're probably not happy about it. And you're gonna start picking up that weapon for yourself. But think of it more as that close to medium range and not necessarily the far range. And it's just not fair. And you're gonna see how that ends up happening as well. So with that, we'll go ahead and talk some class setups. With this one, it's a little bit interesting since you don't need a bunch of recoil attachments. Uh, it kind of evens things out and makes it really simple. I would still run the extended mags just in general. It's good to have that extended mags on there. If you want that hip fire so you could just spam people as they come into a doorway or something like that. You could do the one milliwatt laser that will tighten it up. Combine that with the Merc foregrip so you're getting the double tightening there. And this could be just good for that hip fire spam. Uh, if you want to add that barrel on so you get the extra range. And then the monolithic suppressor. Pretty straightforward. The only downside with this setup is then you're going to have to rock with the iron sights. But if you're comfortable with them, it is definitely a good way to go. You could end up dropping the one milliwatt laser or the Merc foregrip for an optic. Personally, that's what I would do. I'd go with the Merc so I get the tighter hip fire for the close quarters. And then I wouldn't use an optic that is quite zoomed in as much. So maybe the GI Mini Reflex. But there's plenty of great options. The other thing you can do too is if you want to get rid of the Merc and then maybe go for the burst... Um, and feel the power of those one burst kills because you can get a one burst kill within Warzone. So just something to keep in mind. Those are the attachments I'd experiment with. See if you have a little bit of fun. Let me know what you guys think of this. Do you think it'll get nerfed or do you think they're just going to leave it as is? Because personally, I don't think there's any way they leave it as is. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video, learn something new, have a little bit of fun with this. If you did, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new, want to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Join the community Discord so you can join in on everyone partying up and having fun within multiplayer as well as Warzone. Thank you all for the support. Appreciate everything you guys do for the channel. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.